Hey guys, welcome back. Now if you're in a hurry and you want to just get to the build portion of this, that's fine. Skip ahead a little bit, get past the flying logo screen, and it'll get right into it. Uh, the reason I say that is I feel a little compelled to tell just a little backstory about how we got to this thing. This started as a need in the shop for a place to put up some stationary belt and disc sanders that I've had in storage ever since we moved into this place. Uh, so I designed it to be built entirely out of plywood, and right then the price of plywood skyrocketed, and I didn't feel like spending $95 a sheet to get this thing built. So I went into the woodshed and thought, well, what lumber here can I just cut up and make a junky shop project out of? And I had a pile of maple that was so soft and almost rotten, we almost threw it in the burn pile right off the sawmill like it wasn't even going to be salvageable. But after I planed it down to actually the solid stuff inside, holy crap, look at the spalting. This stuff ended up way too nice to just be some beat around shop project. So at that point, a lot of the components were rough cut to size so I could get it through the planer easier and uh, realized I had to adapt my current design to be an inside piece of furniture. So that's how we ended up with my TV stand. Uh, I'm really excited about this thing. It really brought this room together. That's my wife's words, not mine. Uh, let's get into the build. So as I mentioned, most of this started as a pile of rough and punky spalted maple boards that were so bad on the surface that I thought they were unusable until I got them through the milling process. On the bright side, there were a few nicer wide boards mixed in. They were wide enough that I was able to avoid any panel glue ups, but it did make flattening them a little trickier. I had to secure them to a sled with shims underneath and run that whole rig straight through the planer, skipping the joiner altogether. In the case of the top, it was even too wide for my planer, so I used the same technique but passed it through my drum sander to flatten it. This tool doesn't remove material as fast, so the process is slower, but it's really nice to have the capability when the need arises. I cut the bottom and internal portions out of a leftover hunk of 3 quarter inch plywood and used the dado blade on my table saw to cut joinery to fit them together. I made sure I had the best looking grain facing out on the sides, then cut dados into them as well. The back panel of the cabinet will be quarter inch plywood, which will add strength without adding much weight. I cut dados into the sides and the bottom to accommodate this too. I used glue and pocket hole screws to combine the parts that make up the face frame. I moved through the process one joint at a time, and whenever possible, I used spacers to make sure the pieces stayed in their exact right positions. I also like to clamp the show side of joining pieces to a flat surface when using pocket hole joinery. This helps keep the faces from slipping and cuts down on sanding later. If you look at the design of this thing, you'll notice a pretty big blank space between the top and where the storage starts. Essentially, the top of the face frame is oversized. This is where the baffles for my built-in dust collection were going to be back when this was still a sanding cart. I didn't want to fight that far into my redesign to make this a TV stand, so I just left it that way. But it really hurt my brain knowing there was that much space just going to waste, so I decided to fill it with drawers coming in from both sides. I wanted this to look as natural as possible, which meant cutting the drawer face right out of the side, and I needed to waste as little material as possible to keep it a tight fit. This is where I cheated a little bit. I've added a large format CO2 laser to my shop, and I figured the kerf left by a laser was smaller than any blade. I just squared the board in the bed, drew a perfectly positioned rectangle, and let the laser do the work. With that cool knot in the face of that board, this was essentially a 3 quarter inch end grain cut, and even so, it only took two passes with the laser for the cutout to drop free. Sometimes technology wins. Now, I know what you're thinking. But Glenn, I don't have a big fancy laser. Well, first of all, my name isn't Glenn, so I don't know why you would call me that. Secondly, I only really used the laser as a learning experience for myself to see if I could pull this off with a new tool that I didn't really understand very well. But if you didn't like that, why don't you just leave me an unnecessarily aggressive comment down below? And thirdly, if you haven't gotten mad enough to leave already, I'm going to demonstrate the traditional way of making this cut using my table saw, which leaves almost imperceptible evidence in a finished piece of furniture. Let's imagine this piece of wood is the side of the cabinet and we want our drawer in this location. Start by making the rip cuts with the grain through the entire workpiece, then make the remaining cross cuts. Make sure you mark your pieces so you don't forget where they go if your grain isn't pronounced enough to tell you itself. Now just glue the pieces back together, making sure to line things up as precisely as possible. After some sanding, those cut lines just about disappear, and the center piece fits right back in. The thickness of your saw blade creates the space left at the top and bottom, then you just have to trim the sides to match. A little later on, I'm going to use pocket hole screws to secure the face frame to the cabinet. 
In order to do that, I drilled holes in the sides and the partitions now because it'll get much harder to do when the pieces are assembled. I attached the partitions to the base using glue in the dados and screws up through the bottom. Then, using just glue because I didn't want to see any hardware through the side, I attached the sides by clamping them to the partition with a temporary spacer toward the top. This is a very weak joint until the face frame and back are installed, so after the clamps came off I handled it very carefully. I applied glue to the front edges while it was laying down, then tipped it up to attach the face frame. This position made it easier to align everything. I knew that the face frame was perfectly square, so I could push or pull on the sides to make them flush with the frame, which resulted in the cabinet being square now too. With everything clamped where I like it, I drove screws into the back of the face frame to lock it in permanently. Switching over to the drawer construction, there's one big one in the center of the stand and two long skinny ones that pass through the internal partitions to fill up some of that unused space, but you could certainly skip these if you want to keep things simple if you decide to pick up the plans and build this for yourself. I don't really like seeing the edges of plywood in my finished furniture, so I glued strips made from scraps onto the top facing edge before I started cutting the components to length, then cutting the corner joinery. I used glue and brad nails to join everything together, and just flush mounted the bottom since I don't expect anything too heavy is ever going to go into these drawers. The bottom was just a hair oversized, so I used a flush trim bit in my router table to trim it down to size. I used a shelf pin jig to make adjustable shelving inside the cabinet, then used a different jig to drill mounting holes for the door hinges. A while back, I made a separate video outlining the steps to make these raised panel doors, so if you missed that one or just want a refresher, I'll put a link to it in the description. I had to add a few spacers and mounting blocks before I could install the drawer slides, then using another simple jig, I attached the slides to the cabinet, then to the drawers themselves. I like to clamp on a false drawer face so I can butt the slide up against that before tightening it down. To attach the front face, I put a straight edge across the top of the two tall doors to use as a height reference, then I just eyeballed it left and right. I clamped it to the face frame to free up my hands, then screwed it to the drawer through the handle mounting holes. This way, I could remove the drawer and drive in screws through the back to mount it permanently. I removed the temporary screws and installed the drawer pull in their place. The optional side drawers went in very similarly. I just mounted the slides to the mounting blocks, then used a spacer to lift the drawer up slightly before mounting the slides to the drawer itself. I wanted the side drawers to blend in and be hard to see if you weren't looking for them, so I used some push to open slides. This way, I could skip a pole altogether and keep the sides clean. I made up some feet and glued them to the bottom of the cabinet, using wood glue for strength and instantly bonding CA glue to act as the clamp so I could move on without waiting for the typical dry time. I didn't use any sort of fasteners on the feet because I figured this wasn't likely to move around much, so there's not much risk of them getting knocked loose. I used a biscuit joiner to make shallow cuts just below the top edge to give me a place to attach Z-clips when it comes time to mount the top. Z-clips are popular because they're easy to use and they allow for some flexibility when it comes to dealing with wood movement. With everything mounted perfectly, it was time to remove it all and start slinging some finish. Unfortunately, this is where I get to give you a warning to learn from my mistakes. I didn't have the finish I liked on hand, and I didn't want to wait to get some shipped to me, so I went to the local hardware store and bought a gallon of poly from a brand that I'd never heard of, but I picked it because it claimed it was sprayable. I used a high quality sprayer, and I followed the instructions like my life depended on it. And in the end, I'm pretty disappointed with the finish on this one. It didn't bring out the colors in this beautiful maple as much as it deserved, and it ended up with an orange peel-like texture to it. The lesson here is don't dive in headfirst with a finish you haven't thoroughly tested before. This unknown brand of finish that could have been sitting on that hardware store shelf for years as far as I know really took the wind out of my sails on this project. With the finish dry, I reinstalled all the hardware then mounted the top using the Z-clips in the biscuit cutouts. If you plan far enough ahead, you can make a single shallow saw curve all the way around the inside of these pieces to accommodate the Z-clips, but I just didn't want to think that hard and I knew this method would work for me. My last step was to put the back panel in place and attach it to the four vertical parts of the cabinet. I didn't glue it because I wasn't sure it would stay a TV stand forever. This way, I can remove it and replace it with a full sheet that doesn't have the cord cut out and back. So for me, this thing is a TV stand, at least for now. It's a pretty flexible piece of furniture in that you could use it as a sofa table, a hallway table, or even a rolling sanding cart with built-in dust collection if the price of plywood ever comes back down. So in there, I complain pretty heavily about the finish on this thing, and honestly, it's not that bad. The problem is I have something to compare it to. Uh, I put a video out a couple of years ago now about making a, a stool for my little boys at the time who needed to be able to get to the sink in the bathroom. 
And that was actually made out of the same piece of wood as this. Uh, off the log came three different pieces that had that cool knot sticking out the side. And that happens to be this stool. Now with this, I used some General Finishes Armor Seal. And look at the difference in the color, in the sheen. Like everything about this is just flawless. And this is a little bit dull and a little bit sad. If you don't see this, that looks really good. So I may be a little bit too critical on it, but it really did turn out well. I love this almost hidden drawer in the side that pops right out. There's no hardware. We've got this thing filled up with video games and uh, movies and all sorts of stuff. And it's less clutter in the room because it's all stored in a cabinet now. But uh, I believe that's really all I've got. There's no sponsors to thank on this one. So I'm gonna ask you to do the whole like and subscribe song and dance because that sort of stuff helps me out. And I do have plans available for this. So if you are interested, check the link in the description. You can go get some plans and you can build this yourself. And eventually there's also going to be a video about a sanding station with built-in dust collection. And those will have plans too, but they're gonna be pretty similar. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.